Congresswoman Custer. I uh, appreciate you yielding time for this critically important issue. And I want to thank you and also Congressman Ginta for pulling this special order together for your hard work on the bipartisan task force to address this heroin epidemic. So thanks to you both. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as the heroin epidemic sweeps the nation, too many families and communities are mourning the deaths of loved ones who have been lost over the years due to heroin addiction and addiction to painkillers. One of the lives we lost not too long ago was in a town called Rockford, Illinois, which is a congressional district. The gentleman's name was Chris Bozeman. He was 32 years old when he died in the summer of 2014. He was a kind, tender-hearted son and brother. He had a back injury that led to his addiction to pain medication. And when he could no longer get relief from that pain medication, he began to buy different kinds of pain relief on the street. But as the cost would add up, his dealer told him about something called heroin, and he could get this for $10. After his first overdose, Chris tried hard to fight his addiction. He had a couple of relapses, and it appeared that he had been successful in overcoming this addiction. He enrolled in a community college called Rock Valley College, where he studied construction management. He was one year away from graduating. And no one knew that he was still fighting this, ballot, this battle because he was ashamed of it. One night he was, a home, he was home alone, just over one year clean, when he relapsed again, and he died. The sad thing is that Chris's story is all too common. In fact, I lost a member of my own family to a heroin epidemic when my brother-in-law's son died after overdosing on heroin in the summer of 2013. He wasn't the kind of kid that you would think would be taking something like heroin. His dad had no idea. His family had no idea. He was a college football player. He was a musician. He was an avid weightlifter and just a redheaded kid who was fun to be around. But when he injured his back and his knee and felt that he needed more than just aspirin and um, a little physical therapy to overcome this pain, uh, he got on painkillers. And as we're telling these stories this evening, this led eventually to him trying heroin as a way to relieve his pain. And it was probably they thought the third time that he took heroin, he ingested what would be considered pure heroin, and he died. So I'm here to say that we can no longer sit on the sidelines while folks in our community, our family members, are suffering and are dying. When parents are burying their, chi their children, and when the men and women struggling with this addiction are crying out for help. We also know that heroin use is increasing among young people, especially in my home state of Illinois, with, with a nearly 50% increase in the use of heroin just in the last several years. In Winnebago County, this is the place where Rockford is that I was talking about earlier, there were 51 heroin-related deaths in 2013 alone. In, Pe in Peoria, which is also in the heart of my congressional district, emergency responders see at least one heroin overdose every single day. Perhaps most troubling is not just this rapid increase in the usage or the rising number of overdoses, but our inability to treat those who need it most. While heroin use is increasing rapidly in every region in my home state, there has been a dramatic decrease in the availability of treatment. In fact, Illinois ranked worst, last in the nation, in the overall decline in treatment capacity. So while we're at the height of this heroin epidemic, at the height of it, last year, our governor proposed a budget that would cut our already inadequate state-funded treatment programs by 60 percent. So to make matters worse, the ongoing budget crisis in Illinois has gutted funding to treatment programs like one in my district of Rock. It's called Remedies Renewing Lives. That's why next week, when the President gives his State of the Union, my guest will be a guy named Gary Halbach, who's the President of Remedies. So he can witness the State of the Union, and he can talk about the important work that he and his colleagues at Remedies are doing every single day. 
So under the pressure of tremendous budgetary shortfalls, Gary and his team have been on the front lines providing treatment for heroin addicts and support for victim, victims of domestic violence. We will not end the heroin epidemic if the programs that have been proven to help continue to be undermined and significantly underfunded. We cannot turn a blind eye to the families and the communities that have been affected by the heroin epidemic. They deserve better and they deserve solutions.